Hello and welcome to Powner Baptist Chapel and our evening service at home led by some of our young people uh, this evening. This evening we'll be continuing looking at the Lord's Prayer and I'll be sharing with you a thought about the phrase give us today our daily bread. Of course we're reminded in Exodus 16 4 that God is the provider of all of our daily needs. The Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough food for that day. And of course Jesus calls himself the true bread from heaven in John 6, the bread of God, the bread of life, the living bread that came down from heaven. And Jesus speaks of this spiritual gift to life, this spiritual gift that sustains, nourishes and nurtures, and this spiritual sense of the word bread. So let's begin. Let's bow our heads and pray to start. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together across the internet through this video. Holy Spirit, come and touch our hearts. Move us, transform us. Help us to understand your nourishment to us this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. And I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you how welcome you come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. 
presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Today's reading comes from Matthew chapter 6 verses 24 to 34. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wild flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Simplicity, longing for purity, to worship you in spirit and truth, only you. And Lord, strip it all. first love only you and you're the reason I sing the reason I sing yes my heart will sing how I love you Forever I'll sing, forever I'll sing, 
Yes, my heart will sing how I love you. I come with my broken song to you, the perfect one, to worship you. In spirit and truth, only you give me a childlike heart, lead me to where you are, and I'm coming back to my first love. The reason I sing, the reason I sing, yes, my heart will sing how I love you, and forever I'll sing. Yes, my heart will sing how I love you. How I love you. How I love you. How I My first love How I love you How I love you How I love you You're my first love The reason I sing, the reason I sing, yes, my heart will sing how I love you, and forever I'll sing. Forever I'll sing Yes, my heart will sing How I love you I don't know if you've come across Pat Barker's book, Regeneration, but it charts the course of William Rivers, a First World War psychiatrist. And the story is partially based on facts about this uh, particular character. And his role is to help shell-shocked soldiers uh, return to the front. And he's preparing them, readying them, for that return. And within the story, Rivers has this very anxious moment and this thought uh, about the role he plays. Is it a role he should be doing? Should he be sending these soldiers back to the front? What makes someone fit to fight? Should he allow them to go back to do that? And as today, as we consider the Lord's Prayer, we're thinking about our readiness for each day. And throughout this series, we're considering and thinking about the Lord's Prayer and why does Jesus teach it to his disciples? What does it mean to us? 
And of course, there may be any number of responses to that. And all of our speakers will be drawing out different aspects of that over the weeks of this series. But today we'll be looking at those keywords, as I've said already, give us today our daily bread. And it's no mistake that Jesus goes on to, and Matthew records for us, uh, this, this uh, very interesting phrase, do not worry about your life. And there's this great link between the thoughts here about the bread of life and worrying about our own lives. So really the Bible confirms that worry, anxiety, is something that shouldn't really trouble us. The first part of Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything. So there we have it, end of the sermon. Don't be anxious, don't let worry trouble you at all. Hmm. Well, just hold on a moment. Now I have even more anxiety. I had anxiety before, and now I feel even more anxious because the Bible tells me to not be anxious. So what are the words of God telling us? What are they trying to tell us? Of course, anxiety is a great mystery. Emotions, emotional health, is a great mystery to us, really. And of course, uh, we, we all experience anxiety and anxious moments at some point, at some time. And in many ways, anxiety is a natural response. It's something that helps us to avoid dangerous and troublesome situations. So in many ways, it's good for us. But of course, I don't just wake up, you don't just wake up one day and think, hmm, today I'll be anxious because it could be good for me. That doesn't really happen. And none of us get out of bed in the morning and start our day thinking, hmm, I've got anxiety today. It troubles us, it creeps up on us, and it's there in the background for many a day. So, as we've said, anxiety is a natural response. It's something there about us being human. And Jesus in this passage makes the point very clear five times. Do not worry. Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Why do you worry about clothes? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. And of course, Jesus is clearly speaking in context here. And he's speaking to his disciples. This is the way to live. Move from town to town, travel, witness, live for God. Do not worry. But I think it's also got a deeper layer, a deeper meaning and something else for us as modern readers. Don't we have enough to worry about? Don't we even have more to worry about than those first disciples? But I guess for me that I answer that question by the way that I read or the way that you read scripture. So my question is, how do you read this passage, these five statements about uh, worrying? John Piper makes the point that when talking about scripture and thinking about scripture like this, we must avoid looking at scripture as if it were a string of pearls. You know, a nice group of sayings that just give us heart and warm the heart. We must see Jesus' words as much, much more. We must see them as a chain of thoughts, as linked together to the promises of Jesus. It's these chains of thoughts and promises that lead us to freedom, that lead us to step away from that worrying mentality, that lead us to step away from that anxiety and anxious thoughts that we may have. In this way, 
we see Jesus saying, do not worry, five times, very different. Do not worry is linked to a number of supporting arguments. Do not worry, how? Do not worry, how is what Jesus is trying to say. Jesus is saying that in this way, and he's making the point to the disciples and to us, that there is freedom from those anxious thoughts, from that anxiety. That that will come if we learn to trust, if we learn to look at those statements and we learn to live out those promises in our lives. And I think in this passage that, that Jesus makes nine supporting linked arguments to the how of not worrying. And I'm just going to go th through a few of those in a moment too. So in our time together, we're just going to look at three of those nine supporting statements that Jesus makes. You can go through and perhaps see if you can track the others. But I'm going to just make uh, three examples towards the end of that passage. And the first one is from verse 32, which says, For the pagans run after all these things, and your father knows that you need them. And he's talking about something else before. He's talking about what we actually need, the things that we need day by day. So the father knows your need is the first point. You see, pagans, Gentiles, didn't know the father. This is absolutely key. I know the Father. I'm a Christian. I know the Father. Okay, if you're a Christian watching this today, knowing the Father, knowing that he's for you, not against you, is crucial. You see, the Father knows the needs of his sons and daughters. And there's great assurance in that model, in that picture of fatherhood. Because we know that God as Father, we know that our needs will be met. See, that idea that God is Father is crucial in gaining freedom from our anxious and our emotional anxiety. You see, we're not just talking about someone who is a king, who's a ruler, and we're not just talking about someone who's a shepherd, who shepherds us and guides us. But we're talking about our Father. Our Father in heaven. Give us our daily bread. Give us our emotional needs. Help me with my emotional needs. Help me with my anxiety, my daily bread. You see, the God, the Father, knows our emotional needs. He knows our daily bread. He knows what we need. So that's the first thing from the passage in verse 32. The Father knows your need. The second is the phrase, seek first his kingdom. Perhaps the key principle within this passage, and that's in verse 33. Seek first his kingdom. And of course, there's a supporting statement with that, isn't there? These chain, these linked thoughts and ideas. All things will be added. So if we seek first his kingdom, all things will be added. We will gain, we will, we will grow, we will have help in our thinking and our emotional need. Of course, in the point in the passage, he's saying that all the food, the drink, the clothing, all of the things they need, the physical, the spiritual... But also, I would argue, the emotional needs will be added. They will be provided for. It's a great promise. And of course, Paul makes this point in Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. Nobody. Nobody can do that. 
all these things will be added when we seek first his kingdom in all that we do. Getting out of bed in the morning, praying, recognising our Father has our needs key in his heart. Recognising that he will add things to our lives if we seek him in the whole of our lives. Not just our physical needs, but spiritual nourishment for our emotional needs. And the third point I want to bring from this passage is in verse 34, this phrase, do not worry about tomorrow. Jesus says, get your mind set up right. Get the right mindset for each day. This is the purpose of the disciples' prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Get yourself sorted out each day through prayer. You see, we know there will be trouble each day, don't we? There know, we know there will be difficult things. There will be surprising things that we're not prepared for. And there will be things that we know are coming up. And we know that there will be trouble for those things. But we've also got to be prepared and recognise that there's grace for that trouble each day. So we will see that happen if we're ready for that each day. We will recognise and see that. Lamentations 3.21 says, There are mercies new every morning. You know, this was a, a, a book written at a tremendously difficult time in history. Mercy's new every morning. And I believe that reaffirms the point that I'm making here. You see, today's problems are today's problems and there's grace for today's problems. Tomorrow's problems are to be, to dealt, are to be dealt with with tomorrow's grace. We're not supposed to deal with tomorrow's problems with today's grace. So worrying about them isn't going to help. Tomorrow's problems will be dealt with by tomorrow's grace. And it's a spiritual reality. His mercies are new every morning. Crucial, I think, to understanding this passage. So what would it look like if we obediently follow Jesus's words? He speaks to his disciples and says that you have these worries of each day. Go about your life and do not worry. And although we might have very different worries and different anxieties in our age, Jesus speaks to us too and says the same. Do not worry. Tomorrow's problems, there will be tomorrow's grace. Today's problems, there will be grace for those things today. But Jesus assumes that the facts, the truth, the reasons all affect and influence the emotions. All of the things that he speaks about are connected and speak into our emotions. As we've explored, anxiety is an emotion, it's not a decision. No one makes the decision to be anxious. It happens, it can creep up on us without much warning. However, Jesus makes dozens and dozens and dozens of commands to the emotions. And crucially, Jesus commands us to have faith in these promises. He says in verse 30, O oh, you of little faith, O oh, you of little faith, believe, have faith in the facts, the truth, the reasons that he gives, the promises that he makes. You see, it's faith that affects, it changes, it transforms our understanding of the emotions we face. So our command simply in the phrase, give us our daily bread. Our command is to pray. It's to pray 
for faith is to pray in faith for each day. It's to pray throughout and in those reasons and those truths and those promises that Jesus makes, to meditate on those truths. As Paul writes, faith comes by hearing the words of Christ. Give us our daily bread. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Lord's Prayer. We thank you that it draws us closer to you, to your heart. Help us, Lord, to recognise you in our daily strivings, in all that we do. Lord, help us to recognise those things that trip us up, those emotional needs that we have. Lord, be with us. Guide us in those anxious moments. Help us to recognise that there is grace for those things today. And there will be grace for those things tomorrow. Be with us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to consider and reflect on those thoughts that God is with us. His promises are there to guide us and help us with our emotional needs each day. Let's take these uh, next moments in worship to consider and reflect on some of those thoughts.
and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thank you for joining us this evening. Please do be in touch via the church website and the church office should you need anything during the week. God bless.